New discoveries in Petrified Forest National Park. The long-nosed leopard lizard. Desert landscape with mountains in the background. Petroglyph on rock. Looking down from a mountain onto a dry riverbed. View from the top of a mountain into the desert. In the field of biology, we've been doing the same study for 21 years on amphibians and reptiles in the park. And for the first time this summer, we found the long-nosed leopard lizard, which is the largest lizard that we've seen in the park. Long-nosed leopard lizard. We don't know a lot about it, and we don't know exactly why we're finding it now for the first time, but it's exciting to have a new, a new resident in the park. Scientists hiking. One of the methods that I use to find lizards, and it's all about the finding lizards, because once you find them and you can capture them, then that's when you get the data. So one of the methods that I use to find lizards is to pick a habitat within the park. I'll drive out to that habitat, I'll get to the habitat, and I'll take some environmental data. I'll start off at a certain time, and then I'll walk, and I'll walk back and forth through the shrubbery, and I'll be looking, and I'll be poking bushes, maybe pulling back some bushes. I carry a new stick with me in case I want to capture an animal, or I can use that to kind of probe the bushes and maybe get an animal to, to flee. And then in between the bushes, I can try and identify what that is. I'll walk for that hour, and then I'll come back and I'll take environmental data. And then with this temperature data and the species data and the type of habitat, we can learn about the basic um, uh, ecology and the natural history of these animals and their distribution throughout the park. One of the ways that we gather data on animals is to capture them. And capturing an animal, especially a lizard, that runs really quick and hides in holes and under shrubs, you catch them however you can. Sometimes you can catch them with your hand, uh, but an effective method is to use a noose pole. And that's just a thin line on the end of a, a long pole that when you put, hook it around their body, you can tighten it down and it holds them in place. So then you can get them in hand, because you've got to get them in hand to measure them. Uh, once you have an, a lizard in hand, you can take measurements using a, a ruler to get the snout to vent length. You can weigh them. When I get a lizard in hand, as well as taking the, the data, I look at the general health of the animal. Uh, I look to see if there are any parasites on them, any mites or ticks. I look to see if there's any injuries, and then I release it right back where I found it. This is a, a Scoloporus tristicus, a uh, plateau fence lizard. Uh, it's, it's a young adult, uh, a male. One of the diagnostics for this species are these two bright blue throat patches. In the breeding season, you get even more brilliant coloration with this black edge on the side. We did discover a new species of lizard within the park boundaries uh, about a week ago. It's the long-nosed leopard lizard. Uh, we had a group of researchers out from Northern Arizona University, and one of the technicians, Ian Emmons, uh, found this lizard. And it's, it's pretty identifiable. Uh, it's pretty uniquely colored and shaped and sized. And so as soon as he saw it, he knew that this was a new species. Uh, captured it, marked it, took some data on it. Um, a couple days later, I went out, found another individual, and so we were able to come back and take some pictures and do some documentation on that species. One of the things I enjoy most about this job, especially in the National Park, is as I'm out doing my surveys, I come across other uh, resources in the park that are really significant or really beautiful, either culturally or historically. Since a lot of the subjects of my study, the lizards, are around boulders, I get to come across petroglyph panels all the time, and I'm kind of a fan of, of petroglyphs anyway, and so I get to come across petroglyph panels that maybe are not seen very often or by very many people, and so it's just an additional interesting aspect to my job, and I really enjoy uh, not just that, but also being out at sunrise and at sunset when the animals are most active is also the most beautiful time in, in, in my opinion. So I, I enjoy being out there with the animals and discovering other beautiful things within the park. Produced in association with the Southern Colorado Plateau Inventory and Monitoring Network of the National Park Service and the Northern Arizona University School of Communication. Special thanks to Brad Travers, Andy Bridges, and the staff of Petrified Forest National Park.